Welcome back to Brews with the Homies. We return from the birthday share, the beer fest, and we are back with the episode featuring Wolf King. If you've seen a past episode, we did it with Jake featuring one of his beers. So now we're gonna get real deep into this stuff. We have three beers here from him that are collabs. So we have a Solaris collab with Wolf King, 8-Bit collab, and a Seek Beer Co. collab. So these three are very different beers. We're gonna go into a Blue Raspberry Sour Triple IPA with pineapple. Then we're gonna go to a Triple IPA. And then we're gonna go all the way back to um, a IPA that has um, guava and passion fruit. And that's gonna be a hazy double IPA. So with these ones, I wanted to get a little diverse because we have a couple other cans from him, but I think this is a good spectrum for us to dive into. I've tried all these, so I can't wait to share them with you guys. And let's jump into it. I think we'll start with the passion fruit and guava one first because it's gonna be a lot of bold flavors right off the bat. So which one is which so far? So like, as we go down the line, first one that's gonna be the darkest of them is gonna be the Hazy Double IPA with passion fruit and guava okay. from Seek Beer Co. Mm -hmm. The blue one, this nice, beautiful color on it is gonna be the 8-Bit Collab Cyber Wolf. It's almost like 10%. And then the last one that's gonna be that nice, classic, really hazy looking is gonna be the Triple IPA with Solaris called Sea of Tranquility. So I forgot to say, you forgot to mention the special guest that you have in your arms right now. Yes. Who, who is this that you have in your arms? Little Coconut, she's been on another episode just chilling here, but she wants to be a little bit more involved this time. So I take her out to the breweries, chill, <laughs> and everybody loves her. So she's my little beer buddy, besides these two guys oh, right wow. here. Wow, we got replaced by Coconut. Uh, coconut, welcome. Like, we'll, we'll just step off the set and let uh, you guys have that episode know, today. <laughs> All right, let's dive into this, boys, because this one, like I said, it's going to be that darker color. A little bit of, like, floaties going on just because of the fact it's part of that um, pure passion fruit guava kind of in there. Okay. But let's get it. You can definitely smell the guava right, like, like right off the top. Oh, yeah. That first sip right away. Ooh, boy. Like, how, like, how do you just, like... How do you describe this mouthfeel? Like that, that's just like. It's almost creamy, but it's like a perfect blend of flavors hitting, right? You get that normal kind of double IPA that you expect right away, but then it's coated in that nice, like tropical fruit and guava sweetness kind of rounds it all out. What do you think, Karen? You're over here shaking your head. Looks like you're enjoying it. You're already halfway through the glass. Yeah, so I think, did we, uh, did we have this over at Boulder City? The day after the beer fest? Yes, we did. Okay, so it tastes way different now. I must have been like hungover experiencing something <laughs> weird. Because this thing's beautiful. Like it reminds me of the Belchin Beaver uh, Deftones collab. The tropical one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. I forget what it's called. Um, but it, essentially it's kind of the same thing where it's an IPA. But it had passion fruit, orange, and guava in it. This one oh, has the what? pog one. Yeah, this yeah. one just has passion fruit and guava. And guava. Okay. And citra hops. Okay, so yeah, super, super similar. I mean, it brings back great memories because I remember having that beer. I actually bought a 12 pack for, I think, like, I don't know, 15 bucks, but it was 22 ounce uh, bottles. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I guess like they were getting old or something. Like, oh, was it Swarf City? Yeah, Swerve City. That's there the we go. Yeah. Jog yeah, memory. This thing is absolutely incredible. Swerve. City. Wow. Yeah, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Passion fruit, guava, and an IPA. Like, you get that nice IPA, like, character, too. Like, yeah, you don't get lost in the tropical yeah. or the fruitiness, but, yeah, 8%, too. Can I, I would have never guessed. Can I tell you, lately, I've been craving a very good double IPA, and I feel like I haven't had, like, one that was, like... Oh man, like that like knocked my socks off. That was like something that I was like really looking forward to. This one, like I just kind of want to just like say, hey guys, look, there's a plane and just like take your guys' glasses and have them for myself. Like that's how good this is. It's like, <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> it's just a car out there. It's just a car <laughs> that's probably on fire. <laughs> so what, what hops were in here? Just Citra. Citra. Just citra? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I I had a beer yesterday. 
from Tripping Animals. It was, I think, their double West Coast IPA. Okay. And it tastes something similar to this. I don't know. Yeah. It, it might be that Citra. I don't know what it is. Yes. Like, it gives me kind of like a, a, a chocolatey feel, but not chocolate. Like, I don't know. It's it's hard it's to It's just explain. probably the mouth feel, right? Like, kind of that nice, rounded, where it's not, like, too much going on, and it's not going to disrupt. Like, the some hops are too much going on, or they're too bitter, and they kind of disrupt your... Uh, taste buds and it's not clean. But I think I think the fruit in this just be- goes so well with the citrus. So I think it yeah. kind of like the citrus kind of gets like like hidden in it, you know. Yeah. And it's not like most of the time with like the citrus hops, like it's kind of like you can taste that it's there. And with this, like you can kind of taste that it's there, but the flavor from everything else just makes it like a smooth transition. Yeah, it's, into like a, it. it's blended very well. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. There's there's got to be like some phenols or something. Like I think I, I think I'm kind of tasting uh it's a little phenolic remember when uh liam had had brought that term up? yeah i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong but i'm tasting something yeah something it's extra beautiful there. i enjoy that little like extra layer and it it, it does add to the mouthfeel like that mouthfeel creaminess yeah. goes hand in hand with whatever flavor i'm experiencing here man all right we'll move on to the second one so i wanted to kind of split these up since we're going to go double then sour triple and then a regular triple ipa um, so Cyberwolf collab with 8-Bit and Wolf King this one when I saw the pictures of it on Instagram knew I had to get it this is such a beautiful color we love the sour double IPAs from 8-Bit yeah. over the years and sour triple IPA sounds right up our alley so let's get it oh that smells delicious it looks like a fish bowl it has that fish yeah. color to mm-hmm. it you know you could add like a little like gummy shark in here and it's gonna look real cool <laughs> so this one is a sour triple ipa of blue raspberry pineapple and citra so back on that citra train i'm very curious to see what you guys think of this one because for me i get some strong similarities to certain things that i would relate it to so very curious to what you kind of related to It gives me like, like a Jolly Rancher sweetness. Okay, yeah, it's close to what I was thinking. It kind of reminds me of like a Warhead. Okay, like when it's not salty, or I mean, yeah, when like, it's not like sour. When it's not sour, after you licked all the sour off, That's it right. just get like that like aftertaste to it. But then like it's weird because like you would think like on this you would get the sourness like right away, but like I get the sourness after, and I'm like, ooh, like what is that? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like the lingering like that. Yeah, like, back end. So I like the description, the blue warhead, but like on the back end, yeah. the biggest comparison was like blue raspberry licorice. If you ever remember those or ever had one, yeah. I, I loved it. That was kind of one of my favorites. Um, I mean, Bass like, Pro used to have all the different mm, styles of yeah. licorice, like watermelon, like strawberry, blue raspberry. I just raspberry. stick to the red vines. Yeah, you can't go wrong with red vines. No. But the blue raspberry one I really like. So this kind of gives me that nostalgic feeling. Um, you still kind of get the hops. The citrus there in a different way than the last one. Right. Um, with how Apit does the sour double IPAs and stuff, the hops are always there as a complementary flavor. On this, I think you really have to like that blue raspberry taste, and you need to like like that pineapple. I think helps with the sour on the back end. So you have to enjoy a sour back end. And a little bit of hop in there, but 10.4% ABV. Wait, a 10, 10.4? Yep, there, there's that triple, wow. sour triple IPA. Um, I don't really taste it, but that sour kind of does give off a little bit of a booziness, just a little bit on the back end. I would have thought maybe around that 8% is what I would guess blindly on it. So good job hiding the ABV all around, a very cool, unique experience of a beer. But I'm leaning towards liking the first one in terms of drinkability and ability to share. I think this one's just like more of that. See, and I I agree with the share. Like the first one is better than this one. But like I don't think I could ever like drink a full can of this. I think I would have to have like ten homies that would like want to try this to yeah. split it out. Ten of them. You got two of us here. Like. <laughs> well. I, <laughs> To me, I feel like having like a couple of sips of this one like does yeah. it justice for me. Like yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool off of the couple of sips here because 
I don't know what it is about like the like some of these sours now. Like I, I don't know if it's my palate's changing or what, but sours aren't normally like my go to one anymore. anymore. Hey, yeah. I like my hat. Drink more lagers. Uh, yeah, I mean everything. that's what I have been doing, and I've been drinking a lot of shit ton. Or I've been drinking a shit ton of cold IPAs. Yeah. Let me tell you, yeah. I'm glad the cold IPA train is catching on because uh, I've had a couple of good ones. It's especially, a lagered ale, yeah. especially <laughs> Bottle Logics. Oh yeah. So, Heron, on this one, what are your kind of final thoughts? And yeah. How would you rate it? What would you kind of do with this one if you had so, extra cans. So this thing came out of 8-Bit, right? Yes. And it was a collab with Wolf King. Yes. So essentially the 8-Bit Sour IPAs, because this is a Sour what? Yeah. Double? Or Sour Triple. Sour Triple. Okay. okay, so I don't know if I've ever had a Sour Triple. Yeah, have we had a Sour Triple? I, did, I think did we that had exist? like one, but yeah. Yeah. So a long time ago. I don't yeah. think we've had them recently. Essentially yeah. the Sour Triples would have like that passion fruit kind of very sour kind mm -hmm. of characteristic to them. Where this one is, is very sweet. Like, it would have, like, that sour, but also that sweetness as well. And it would taste somewhat hoppy. Like, I think the citra kind of, like, takes a back seat. It's still there. Yeah. But, like, everything kind of is just, like, so rounded out that you look at the label saying sour IPA. And you're just like, okay, well, it's kind of, like, you kind of have to pick it apart. It's a little yeah. more, you, you got to do a little more digging than what 8-Bit usually does with their sour IPAs, yeah. which is make them sour, make them sweet, and make them hoppy. Like, yeah. all those things are, like, turned all the way up. Yeah. So, I mean, this one's subtle. It's cool. It's unique. But, yeah, it is It is on the sweeter side of things. Yeah, I think it's layered because I still think, like, the front has a little bit of sweetness, but I, in my personal opinion, the back end has a lot more of, like, a sour tartness. But it's more of, like, that warhead kind of tart or hop kind of adds to the tartness on the back end but yeah i think this is one that a lot of people that enjoy beer or like the layers and going through a beer to see how a brewer made it or enjoying the experience would the really journey. enjoy yeah this one's a very <laughs> like enjoy the journey type of uh beer but, but it's subtle yeah. it's subtle for sure the journey is subtle it's not like oh mountains and you know, it's yeah, like, you don't have to be like it's, it's, not it's like rolling complex. rolling hills landscape with a little bit of you know different plants and diversity there, but it's not it's not loud like this. This one was it had more pop to it. Yeah, the first know? one definitely. Yeah. So it just this one I think it comes down to what style you like, what are you open to, and I think that's where Ape It has kind of shied away from. Ever since we used to drink them a heavily amount, like during COVID and that realm of when they were pushing out so much very strong, interesting, unique flavors, and then kind of went a little bit more safe, and then now they're kind of rounding back out to experimenting a little bit more, it seems like. But yeah, overall, really like it. I just am leaning towards the first one a lot more in terms of enjoyability. So with that, let's jump into the third one, Sea of Tranquility. It's gonna be a Solaris and Wolf King collab. Oh yeah. Uh, Liam said that this was probably his favorite triple IPA that he has helped make. Um, I think when I had this, incredible. And let's try it before I spoil anything else. Yeah, I was just about to say, can I like try it before you like? You yeah, that's me? why I'll, I, I, I you know, <laughs> just you'll see what I mean when you drink it. Did I have one of these before? Yeah, you, we shared some of it. Shared one? It was the day after the fest, so... Hey, it was a day recovery. after fest? Like, literally. <laughs> day after fest, taste buds were weird. They had... They made no sense. I don't know what I was eating. I, I was trying to drink some lemonade, but it tasted like... I don't know. It, taste, it tasted weird. I think it's because of, like, all the, like, beer that you had is probably still on your tongue, and then you try to like drink on top of it like i just, sometimes just, like after beer fest like i just wanted like hey i'm not gonna have a beer today yeah you gotta relax <laughs> like, but yeah. we had to keep going we wanted to jump oh, to yeah. they said to share some more stuff they said the marathon continues yeah, for sure <laughs> funny enough we actually went golfing the day after oh yeah, god before we had more beer oh okay so we so did have some beers on the court so so you guys kind of sweated out what you had in your system yeah sweat a out bit. some drink a little bit more get ready for yeah. the night <laughs> we, we all played so well too oh, it was, was incredible time. like we all shot under 90 yeah which is great yeah I got great for us 79 85 and then steven 
87 or 87? Yeah, 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 somewhere around there. But yeah. it was a great day, even with a little bit of win. We still that was a lot of win. A lot of win. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, don't downplay that. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. But this one, I really enjoy. So it's going to be 10%. So just a tad bit under the last one. It's a triple hazy IPA, whirlpooled with Idaho 7, Citra Incognito, and triple dried hop with Nectron, HPC 1019, and Matueka, liquid hop Keef. So there's a lot going on this Keef. one. Keef? Yeah. Keef is in this? Oh. Oh, God. I'm, I'm curious if they mean, like, that's the hops and only the shaved, like, extra part well, where you get uh, all the... <laughs> flavor and everything that's what that's what most of the time keef is like, keef is like the fine super grain. Fine. yeah and that's normally what, like where all the most potent Humming. shit is at so and let me and let me tell you that that hits that shit out of the park yeah because i think they were trying to accomplish some huge flavors of pineapple orange candy lime passion fruit guava and peach so this is one of those triples where you're getting a soft kind of mouthfeel, very tropical. Um, the sweetness across the board is there. This is one where super approachable for many people that want to start drinking heavy or get into the triple game. This is what got me into triple IPAs. Something like this, super drinkable. You could have two of these and be perfect, like or a little bit extra lit for some people. Oh, yeah. But I have one and I'm gone. Yeah. Can I, can super I'm creamy, <laughs> smooth, and beautiful color on it. I'm going to pull a Charles Barkley here. This is probably the best triple I've ever had. And I can guarantee that it's the best triple I've had. So, you know. I like that one. Uh, you know. Gotta, I, dude. This is so enjoyable. So I don't want to drink anymore. I just want to like hold savor it, it. Hold savor it. it. Like, uh, what's the dude from Harry Potter? The the little goblin dude. Um, or no, like, Lord, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. I was like, wait a second. I sure. was like, you're talking about Dobby, bro? Yeah, yeah Dobby. There we go. I'm going to be like, Dobby, it's mine. <laughs> no, that's a, that was the Lord of the Rings, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know who that little guy is. I don't know, but that, that shit's great. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It, you have like that kind of like hot bite, like right at the end. You know, you have like it, it lingering a little bit. But it's so, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, this is what a so triple sweet. is. It's like the epitome of what I look for in a triple IPA. Like this rivals, I would say, neck and neck with like Monkish, North Park Triple, uh, Fidens, Fidens. You know, we always have that debate. But all the way up there with top class in terms of triple. Now I understand why Liam said this is probably one of the best triples he's helped make um, as a head brewer absolutely killed it man this is one that i wish i only got a four pack of i should have ordered fucking a shit ton should have just ordered went in there and picked yeah should have just should have just ordered a keg we <laughs> would have figured out it up, yeah you know? we should have just figured it out and got a keg of this and liam if you're listening to this this is fucking phenomenal thank you like yeah this one round of applause yeah. now you understand why i almost dove straight into talking about it because i was so excited to talk about this one yeah you said you got more in the fridge? Yeah. Oh, you might not have more after that. He's going to have to have an after pod beer, but... Yo, we got to kick this man out. He's going to steal all He's trying shit. to steal our beer. What's going on? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to steal this triple. I mean, hey, this is this is really good, all right? Yeah. Like, let me tell you, I... You know, it's that summertime here in Vegas. This is when, like, the triples, the doubles, the singles, all the... Yeah. Like, everything is, like, in season out here. And this right here was just like icing on the cake. Like to start a pool day or like if you just want one to hit you good and then, hey, cold IPAs, lagers, pilsners to kind of round you out after this, perfect. But I want to get kind of ratings on this because now that we tried all three, they're all phenomenal. I think they're great beers, but let's rank them. Right. Dustin, I'll let you go first. I think I already know you're first, but. Uh, well, let's let's just get the obvious out the way. The Solaris collab, that's number one. I think, in my opinion, that's a solid five. Like that's a that's a guarantee five. Like hard. Like yeah. nobody's changing my mind. Like that's a five. Um, my second favorite one, definitely got to go with the first one. Yep, Seek Beer Co. Seek Beer Co. I think this is my first time ever having one from them. Yeah, so. I think like, my bar for them is, like, I have no, like, judgment for it. So, I'm going to say that one's, a, like, a 4.7, four, 4.6. Four, like, it's yeah. very solid. Like, this is one I would go back to. If Beer Zombies had it on tap, I think 
that would be the one I would always get off tap. And then the 8-bit one, I, I don't know, because like I said, my taste buds are kind of changing, I think, when it comes down to beer. Like, I think this one's like a 3-9. Like, it's definitely something that, like, I would bring to share with all the homies. It's not something that I can drink by myself. No, hey, that's fair, you know. So, Aaron? Yeah, I kind of want to mirror your ratings almost exactly. Like, if I were to run a spot and this spot would only have beer that I drink and these beers would hypothetically never go bad, I would have both of these beers on the end on tap 24-7 hypothetically they never go bad yeah <laughs> the one in the middle i could i could do away with i i don't necessarily need it it's cool i know there's somebody somebody out there will like it yeah. like a lot but yeah like us like i i kind of want a little more sourness out of it i'm not also i'm not a sweet tooth dude like i love candy yeah. But also, I don't eat candy a lot now in my... Ever since I turned maybe like 15, I just don't eat that much candy. Yeah. Back then, if I was a 15-year-old, I'd probably drink the shit out of this beer. But then again, I wouldn't be of legal age to drink this beer. So, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's a hypothetical. So, <laughs> you would have been, yeah. what, what, like 12 years late? 13 years late? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, realistically, uh, let's see, six years early? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. I need to turn 21. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good way well, well, <laughs> what I was saying is, is the beer came out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. We got you. We yeah, got you. I appreciate it. I, just, I, just I, I saw what you were going. Yeah, on. yeah. Oh. No, take a little detour. Dude, we have to do math right now. Like I'm fucking over this shit. Dude, I, oh. I just on the mind right now is the triple and the first one. Like oh, yeah. that's that, that's yeah. what the mind is yeah. on right yeah. now. Yeah, look, this oh. man, he's already. You know, you can tell a lot about a person about which beer they finish first. So yeah. let's see so, what you have to say. So my big thing is, I'm a triple whore. Heard on the podcast many times from he Dustin. Said, you say triple, he get uh, well, instant hard. He said, <laughs> what? Yeah. What did you say? Hey, give me that triple <laughs> IPA. But um, it's tough because I really like the Seek Beer Company um, collab, Modern Escape. That one, I could have any time though, right? At that, Yes, it's going to be on that 8%, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And... I would reach for that because I'm such a big fan of passion fruit and guava. Yeah. That is something that I could share with people, introduce them to these flavors, has a little bit of hops in there. That citra is working beautifully. It's very well rounded. It's so hard not to put that above the triple, but God damn, I'm a triple whore at heart. And you know, I'm going to put the triple first because I cannot deny an amazing triple. This is something I would stock in my fridge, as Heron would say, in hypothetical situation of beers never going bad, I would drink this all the time. And it would be something to where I would have all the time in my fridge to share with people, drink by myself. I would down that gaming with the homies, the modern escape from C, I would have that all the time. So it would basically be my rating five for the triple, four point eight five for the seek beer modern escape and we go back to the eight bit one i'm a little bit different in terms i was one of the first people to i would say put a eight bit sour double apa is one of my favorite beers ever it's probably the first five that i gave drinking craft beer so i love their stuff i love that liam brought some of his vibe to it and i enjoy it i had a whole one to myself the other night it does take a while to get down and I understand all the stuff that you guys said. I think you guys hit the nail on the head. For most people, this is not gonna do it. And I think a select people will really appreciate and love the fuck out of this. I appreciate it, I love it, but it's still on my rating scale. It's gonna drop down to probably like a 4.1 because it's just, even though it's, to me, not that sweet on the front end, you get a little bit of sour, I think it's just very strong at 10.4%. People are going to be like, whoa. And there's just a, even though it's like Heron said, it's not mountains to go through and layer it. It's kind of like hills and stuff. It takes an experienced beer drinker to appreciate this. And I think people would reach for this more if they're not experienced, just to kind of get fucked up. So that's where I get it down to that 4.1. Still a great beer. I still love it, but. It's a fun beer to pick out if you're like at, at like, at like a bottle shop or yeah. like at a bar because everybody's like beautiful yeah, yeah everybody'd cool. be like oh what what is that that's it, so fun what, is, is that a 
Is that a mixed drink or is that a beer? Yeah, like, like it that's gets the, people talking. That's yeah. the whole fun part of sharing beer. It gets people talking, share the experience. So I have more cans of this. We've already shared it once. It's something that I'll definitely share it. And when we shared it, a couple of people really liked it. So that's why I love sharing because people have different palates. But definitely, I think the winner across the board is going to be the triple IPA from Solaris and Wolf King, followed by Modern Escape with Seek Beer Co. And then... Last, but, you know, not least in our hearts, you know, for a lot of people, will be the 8-bit one. But, hey, that's how it falls sometimes. I want to clarify something here. Yeah. Just because I gave the Seco a 4.7, mm-hmm. I still think it's on the same tier as the triple. It's Like I said, this is my first time ever having something from Seco. So, like, if you do, like, the tier list, it goes, like, the triple's up top in the first tier, yeah. and then this one is, like, in the middle of that first yeah. tier, you know? So, like, those, t- it's really hard to pick between both of them. And like Joseph said, like, you want to pick this one, but this triple is so well done and so well rounded that you just go, fuck it. Yeah, like, like, that's the one. Yeah, like, that is the one. Like, single handedly, like, once I had my first sip, like, I, I was just like, the light bulb in my head just said, bing, like, yeah. that's the one. When you drink it, like, I just finished my last sip because I had to say best for last for me, is that just creaminess, all the flavor, tropical flavors. Creaminess. And- out the park I just fucking nailed on all levels that is one that I think would stand the test of time and go against some of the best breweries across the US hands down I have a question for you JB yes. you gotta save this triple yeah and then we gotta get a couple other triples and I wanna see how you rank the triples I wanna see you do a blind taste test of the triples and yeah. see if you can identify which one is which. Yeah. I will give you a list of the breweries. Yeah. And then you can just pick from there. I think yeah. that's I think that's something that we gotta do here in the new oh, future. Yeah. For sure. Cause there's always good triples coming out across the board. Oh most be, definitely. Be fun to do. So we'll wrap this one up. Stay tuned for another episode we're gonna be doing, kind of recapping the beer fest, uh, my birthday uh, bottle share at Bowler City. And we'll be talking about the award that Boulder City won over there. So congratulations to them. And we'll hit you guys up on the next one. Thank you again, Liam. Thank you again. Thank you guys. Solaris, 8-Bit, Seat Beer Co., and Liam, Wolf King. We appreciate you all. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. We'll catch you later.